The roadblocks on the merchant and enterprise side is that accepting things like cryptocurrency, there's a lot of volatility in those markets. So uh, in, until there's an, a way to stabilize that, uh, a lot of these merchants won't accept cryptocurrency. Hey everyone, my name is Brandon Bergeson and I'm the founder and CEO of Moby and Moby Pay. We are driving blockchain adoption and payments in retail getting above the hype, above the coins, tokens, and seeing blockchain technology for what it's best for, payments. On this episode of Blockchain Beyond Hype, I'll talk about blockchain technology and payments in retail. Hope you enjoy. Uh, the main challenges are not having access to uh, banking systems and uh, the technology. Uh, the current infrastructure is, uh, is archaic and, and very slow. Um, so that poses a real problem to uh, the overall industry. I think the main roam blocks are, is the ease of use uh, for blockchain. Uh, currently, there, uh, there's some very uh, complicated systems in place that most users don't understand. And I think until it's simplified, it's going to be very difficult for mass adoption to have both in the crypto and blockchain space. The roadblocks on the merchant and enterprise side is that accepting things like cryptocurrency, there's a lot of volatility in those markets. So uh, in, until there's an, a way to stabilize that, uh, a lot of these merchants won't accept cryptocurrency. The current challenges in the retail industry is while well, waiting days for uh, things to process uh, and also high processing fees for those merchants. Uh, funds typically take three to five days. Uh, also chargebacks is a big thing that's plaguing the retail industry right now. Payment data will significantly change the way that these transactions happen. Uh, these transactions uh, in mobile payment data are very significant. For one, uh, China is now uh, number one with technology and AI from mobile payment data. So when this data comes about, uh, there are you know, retail industries and uh, consumers will be able to deliver content and goods uh, that are more um, more in line for what the consumer is looking for without them being bombarded from things that don't matter to them. This will also increase loyalty programs and help with supply chain management as well. Well, it affects the supply chain management because when the uh, mobile payments are used and that data from those mobile payments, you can actually see exactly what those customers are buying from what retail store, what brands, what time of day, and all this data affects the supply chain and therefore uh, making more intelligent decisions on how and when to bring that those products into the marketplace at what retailers and what geographical locations. I think that the shift in underbank and unbanked countries will be much greater and much faster than Western countries like the United States. For instance, in Mexico, 52% of the population is unbanked as opposed to the US where there's only an 8% of the unbanked population. Uh, people in the US, for instance, uh, they don't have, they're not motivated uh, as you would, as the same as the people in Mexico would be uh, because they have things like credit card points and credit cards. It's very easy for them to pull out. They have access to this Western technology. People in Mexico need this technology to actually have a better quality of life. I think that the transition will effectively happen much faster. Well, I think the biggest revenue model would be for the data. Uh, data is the new oil and uh, data really affects everything in our life and it helps companies become more efficient uh, and help market uh, a lot more, uh, a lot better. Uh, in addition, there's also merchant fees and merchant processing fees that can help that. Also enterprise level blockchain that actually increases efficiency uh, and deliverables for uh, the retailers that add to their bottom line. We're working on several use cases right now at Moby. Uh, one of them is in the rideshare space. 
And what we're doing is we're uh, enabling this company to not only uh, send global remittances to scale their company on a global level, but also is enabled them to accept any type of currency as payment uh, instantly uh, and convert it into the local fiat cash. Also, another uh, interesting use case is for another partner uh, in the social influencer space. Uh, this partner cannot scale their business. They came to us, they cannot scale their business because they can't pay these influencers efficiently and instantly and therefore they're stuck. So we enable them to pay not only in the US but also globally via our token, which converts any cryptocurrency or cash uh, instantly in their local currency, wherever they're at in the world. To create a global sharing economy and payments platform where users are incentivized to transact with each other and other businesses, in a frictionless and uh, secure manner, all while enabling them to give rewards back to others and businesses or organizations in need. Most projects and platforms are using ERC-20 and uh, historically popular opinion is wrong. So when I wrote the white paper, um, I was looking for a solution that can actually fit in with my business use case. Uh, and then I started reading on Stellar. Um, Stellar has some great aspects to it that many people don't know. Uh, number one, Stellar has a decentralized distributed exchange, which allows you to convert uh, crypto and cash assets or fiat assets on the exchange. Uh, they also have what's called anchors, which are liquidity providers and other institutions or organizations around the world that allow the liquidity in that local currency. So essentially their nodes and each anchor provides that liquidity uh, in the overall global network. Uh, and lastly, they have a lot of KYC um, and AML built into the wallet addresses. So it's great for compliance. We are an actual currency. Um, so when it comes to Stellar, they're a smart contract base, but it's very limited. Therefore, it's a more secure and it also allows uh, it with the regulators uh, much more clarity on being a currency as opposed to a security or a utility. Uh, it's more cost effective, more efficient and more secure. I envision blockchain changing the world as it connects everything in a trustless manner. Unfortunately, we live in a civilization where people don't trust each other, companies don't trust each other. In order for that to change, there needs to be a mechanism in place for people to transact, to make agreements in a secure and reliable manner, and also have to be immutable. Uh, smart cities and, and, and uh, countries like Dubai have already started building their entire infrastructure on blockchain. Uh, you see the payments and global remittance for global economy that we are all into and we are starting to even progress more and more. Um, I believe uh, blockchain is the fourth industrial revolution and I'm happy to be a part of it at this uh, early stage. Exponentially, I think the curve will start to um, uh, increase as uh, a lot of the um, naysayers about Bitcoin and blockchain technology are being uh, proven wrong. Um, I think that you're seeing a lot of comments uh, by President Trump and other regulators in the US uh, that there's a lot of um, money laundering and, and things that uh, and bad connotations against blockchain. Uh, but the reality is in that re retrospect, it's a hundred to one uh, ratio compared to what fiat is compared to cryptocurrency. So cryptocurrency overall blockchain for enterprise applications, uh, you know, ultimately change how we uh, how we live and how we transact with each other. Thank you guys for watching. If you're curious about blockchain technology for retail, check out Moby. And if you want to learn more about blockchain, follow Blockchain Zoo social media, and don't forget to subscribe to their YouTube channel. See you.